Well, friends, good morning and welcome to Wellversed. It's lovely to be together and I pray, as always, that our time will be a blessing. And I do need to say to you that this time that Harry and I share together preparing this is a blessing for us. And so we love to share something of what we do with you and we hope and pray that it will be helpful. I'm going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6 today and I'm going to be looking at prayer This is one of those topics that we kind of think, well, we know all about this. But I'm hoping that we can just come with an open mind and just hear Jesus and the words that he says, and maybe I can just embellish that a little bit for us. So, in fact, it is the passage about the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, and from verse 6 through to verse 13. And when you pray... Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Just to there. I know that this is a very well-known passage, but let me just try to work with it a little and perhaps bring a perspective or two that is fresh. Put it this way, in Jesus' time, the Jewish leaders prayed in public to be seen. Not so for us. Verse 5 says that they'll receive nothing from God, either in this life or the next, just as a rider to that, by the way. Because you see, for Jesus, and I think for all of us, prayer is private. And the focus of our attention in prayer is on God not on ourselves. And there's a sense in which verse 6 actually says it. We need to pray and shut out the worldly things. But we can pray together. And it's good to pray with believers, whether together or alone. But the focus is always on God and not praying to be seen by the world, however you want to define that. Many people make the mistake of believing we have to pray in a special way, that there's a prescribed way to pray and that's the only way to do it in order for God to answer our prayers. That's not true, my friends. Prayer is special. The words are special. But for all time and for all places, prayer is not for God's benefit. Prayer is for our benefit. Remember, He knows our needs before we ask. But the special thing to note is that he wants us to ask. God wants us to talk to him. He wants us to interact with him. He wants us to depend on him, just like children. He wants to give us what we need. Matthew seven eleven says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And he's able to give immeasurably more than we ever ask or imagine. That's Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. In other words, it's for our benefit, not God's in a sense. This is the God we need to meet when we go into our rooms to pray. The God who loves us, the God who calls us to be in touch with him, to be in communication with him. And when we do that, the blessings are unlimited. All we have to do is ask in faith. And so the disciples ask Jesus, teach us to pray. And he does that great prayer that we know. If you want the condensed version, it's in Luke's gospel, by the way. So how does it start? It starts farther. Not to an idol, not to a spirit, not to an angel, not to a saint. Our prayer is addressed to a loving father 
who is powerful, yes, but who loves us above all, to a God who knows everything about us. Hebrews 4.13 Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. When we pray, we unleash the power to bless. Ephesians 1 verse 3 Pray and speak to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And when we pray, we pray to the one who has the power to send us to hell. Let's not forget that. He teaches us above all to come, but to come with praise and to come with thanksgiving, to come with gratitude and all the rest. That his kingdom will come now because we're still in a sinful world. We need to pray that God will come into our lives today, not sometime pie in the sky when we die, that his kingdom might be fully revealed to us now, that his will might be done now and today. Do we pray our prayers expecting God to answer us immediately? Half the time we don't, may I suggest. And so I want to suggest that now is a good time to bring our petitions to God, to come to him with the things that we need that are important in our life, our needs for our body, for bread. The prayer says it, give us this day our daily bread. Our needs are for our soul, for forgiveness. Our needs are for our spirits to be delivered from the evil one. You know, bread equals food, equals clothing, equals houses, equals health. How does God provide for you and for me, for your needs, spiritual and practical Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, speaks about debts. Some versions use the word sins. And as we forgive, so God forgives. If we stop forgiving, God stops. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. When we ask for forgiveness, we're asking for God to cleanse us, to set us free from the sins in our own lives. And if we stop forgiving, God stops. And do we want God to stop forgiving us? Of course not. And I want to ask you, how do you feel about this? Because debts equals sin. As we forgive, so God forgives. And if we stop forgiving, God stops. And I wonder if we've ever stopped to think it through. That prayer is not one-sided. It cuts both ways. We ask God to forgive us, but are we forgiving in our own lives? Unforgiveness is like shutting off one end of a pipe. Because forgiveness needs to flow through our lives, into our lives, and out again, taking the sin with it. If we stop the end of a pipe, eventually nothing's going to happen in that pipe. So, in other words, no in, no out. It's that simple. And please let's remember that this prayer talks about temptation. To fall is to be defeated by Satan. Giving into temptation separates us from God. Anything that separates us from God, in a sense, is sin. Think about the final temptation. The final temptation is to turn away from God. Please let us never do that, my friends. My special friends, let's never turn away from God. The more we come to him, the more he comes to us. The more we turn to him, the more he turns to us. And finally, I want to suggest that this prayer that Jesus teaches us ends as it begins. Praising God. Amen means so be it. And so here's a last thought. In our prayers, and I'm off at a tangent here, In our prayers, do we give time to listening for God? Do we give time to waiting for God to speak? Because you see, in a sense, prayer is conversation with God. It's not one-sided and it's not one-directional. Prayer 
like conversation is two ways. Do we do all the talking? And do we ever allow time for God to talk to us? Please let's not forget to listen. When we've prayed, take some time just to be quiet and listen for God. You will be surprised how God can speak into our silence. My friends, I pray this has been helpful. It's just such an important part of our Christian journey. And I pray that in simple terms, as I've tried to keep it today, that our prayer life will be energetic and it will be infused with a sense of wonder and awe and love and compassion and all the power that God seeks to pour out into our lives. Thank you for being with me this morning and I pray for God's blessing to be with you as you go back into your day. Amen.